Hmm. One burr rune, two burr runes, three, four, five, six, seven, seventeen, twenty-seven, thirty-seven, forty-seven burr. Oh, sorry. Hello, guys and gals, and welcome. Sorry, I was just counting my burr runes. You know, it's um, it's good to have infinite burr runes whenever I want them to. And you might be asking me what the hell I'm talking about. Well. If you missed today's stream, well, yesterday's stream, by the time I post this video, you will not know what's going on. Let me show you. First, we go to the waypoint, and we click on Travancall. Then we go back to the waypoint and click on Lower Kurost. We teleport here, we click on the skeleton, we click on the corpse, we click on the armor stand. We click on the stash. We click on the weapon rack. We click on the chest. We then run over here all the way over to this little spot right here. And we click right there. And just like that, every single time, we get a burr rune. Let me do that again for those of you who don't believe. So that I can show it to you, well, twice or thrice. Or 47 times, or technically 48 now that I've uh, I got that one, because that one brings me up to 48 total. And um, all you have to do is follow this particular procedure. Now you might be asking, how the hell does this work? How the hell can you guarantee that a burr rune will drop from a chest every single time? Surely you're hacking, there's duping involved, you're using hero editor... Uh, whatever other number of things that you can potentially come up with. And the answer to that question is no, I'm not. Basically what it comes down to, and as you can clearly see that I didn't get a burr rune this time, is it comes down to a very strict set of circumstances that leads to the burr room. Almost like a combination to a safe or a, a key to a lock. If you don't do it exactly correct, which is what you just saw, that I didn't do it exactly correct, you don't get the burr rune. Even just a slight deviation from the result leads to you not getting what you want. Now in this particular case, I already have the prescribed method. I just need to make sure that I follow it correctly. In that particular time, I didn't follow it correctly. But the first time I did, and the third time I did. And I can do this all day. You might be asking, how the hell does this work? Can I replicate this? Does it work online? Does it work offline? And uh, if you follow along, I'll explain everything for you today in the video, at least as much as I understand. And um, we'll get um, a better understanding of why the burr rune drops. Um, <laughs> what you can do with your burr rune. How you could replicate these results if you want to. Um, all of the above. Uh, let me get one more burr rune in here. Just to really hammer it home. And uh, and then we'll go over the details together. Yeah, why you gotta punch me in the face like that, you little turd? Um, as you can see, I literally just got three burr runes in what less than a minute. <laughs> um, there's one more to the pile. There is a two more to the pile, and there is three more to the pile, and we now have fifty burr runes uh, total. These are not duped burr runes. These are not hacked. These are not modded. They are not hero edited in. They are actual legitimate burr runes that are being dropped from a chest. Um, and how are we doing this? Well, to understand how we are doing this, you have to understand that the game doesn't really have a true randomization. It's more or less a combination of events that leads to a result. And the number of events that lead to the result can sometimes be, well, a little complicated. But you can simplify the number of events so that you can control essentially what comes from the chest. Um, to give you more of an interesting example, uh, let's pretend, for instance, and let's pull out a notepad. Let's pretend, for instance, that you have a chest, right? So chest. This chest has any number of drops that can potentially come from it. Let's pretend there is anywhere between one all the way down to 255 uh, different loot table drops for this particular chest. Um, one could be something as simple as a 
dirk, and a double axe. Um, and another one could be something as simple as a harpoon and a kite shield. Um, and you might be saying that, well, Ginger, you're just making up those examples. Those examples don't actually exist. Follow with me. And I'll show you exactly what I mean. Now, if I go directly to Lower Kuros, then I do not go to Travancol first, and I don't click on anything, and I open up the chest, look what chops. Look, uh, look what's on the ground, me hearties. What's that? A dirk and a double axe. Hmm, surely that's a fluke, Ginger. Surely that's a fluke. It's it, luck of the draw that you got exactly what you stated, right? It's, it's, there's no way that that's... You can't replicate that. Well, I can. Every single time. Without fail. Well, what about the harpoon and the kite shield? That's the you, that's, you made that up too. Well, I can replicate that. Every single time. Without fail. And that one's just as easy as changing the variable slightly. Well, how do you change the variables? Well, in this particular case, we change the variable by going to the durance of 8, and then going to the worker rust. This changes the variable of the super chest, makes the super chest drop me... Um, well, actually, no, it didn't drop me the harpoon and the kite shield. That's rather interesting. I was wrong. But this one, the ring, the helm, and the, the full helm and the battle dart, I've seen those before. That one usually comes from sewer, or the spider forest. The Spider Forest usually drops those. It's actually interesting because Spider Forest and Turrets of Hate usually have the same drops, but this time their drop seems to have switched, and now the Harpoon and the Kite Shield is at Spider Forest. I'm not exactly sure, 100%. I haven't worked out all the details, but I know enough to know that changing the variables changes the drop, because it changes the drop table entry. Somewhere in the center of this drop table, uh, or I don't know where it is actually, the drop table, that's just, that's just me being facetious. Um, but somewhere, like, I don't know, let's say at 123, exists the burr rune. Now, the question becomes, how do you get the chest to drop you that specific item? Well, the answer comes into play with basically what circumstances lead you to the chest so that it drops that item. And essentially that's what I spent like eight hours finding out uh, yesterday as I played around with the variables and messed around with things until I eventually came to a conclusion. Uh, come to find out that somebody else had also come to the same conclusion, and they came to it better than me, and I followed their combination, and their combination worked better than mine. I'm, I'm actually using their combination now, not the one that I originally came up with, because their combination works more reliably than mine. Mine was a little bit more convoluted and didn't really work quite as well, and uh, kind of a pain in the butt. Now, I promised that I would show you guys how to do it, um, and I would promise that uh, I would give you the information that you needed to do it yourself. Um, so this only works on offline. So before you guys get too excited with the online aspect of things, um, it does not work online. However, it does work online. <laughs> I know, it's confusing. Okay, so you can't reliably get a burr rune every single time online because you can't reliably maintain a seed code. So when you go online, your seed code is refreshed every single time that you go into a new game, and that seed code is one of the most important things for finding this because that particular chest in this particular seed code is the one that drops the burr rune, not the other chests. So if I go to Lura Kuras and you go to any of the other super chests, like for instance, there's a super chest right here, this one doesn't drop the burr rune, and this one doesn't drop the burr rune. It's only this one here that drops the burr rune. 
Um, and in a different seed code, there are different sets of chests. And the different sets of chests will drop different items depending on which. Now they could have all sorts of various things in them. The chest could have, for instance, a Burr rune, it could have a Jaw rune, it could have a Zod rune, it could have an Ohm, a Low, it could have any other number of things. In fact, right next to the, on the loot table, because I've been testing this extensively, right next to the loot table on this, before this one, is actually an Ith rune. Don't know why. Um, and after this one is a Am rune. And you might be asking, how the hell I know this? Well, I've been doing it long enough that I found that if I was too slow, or if I did things slightly incorrectly, I would end up with an Ith rune. And if I did things a little bit too fast, uh, and I didn't quite um, like keep the right pacing, I would end up with an Am rune, and I could get an Am rune or an Ith rune almost every single time um, if I did it wrong. Um, and if I did it correctly, I ended up with the Burr rune, and because of that, I've got a whole bunch of Am runes in here from all of the times that I literally failed uh, getting the Burr rune, and it's quite interesting. Um, in fact, a lot of this stuff is very interesting, and the things that are actually considered variables uh, are very fun to play with. And you might be saying, well, you know, like, Ginger... Having that many burr runes is just cheating. I know it's not technically cheating, and you didn't technically dupe them, but it is an exploit, and you're just kind of ruining your single-player gameplay through um, by doing this. But I look at it more differently than this, and this is, well, I'm getting to peek behind the curtains on how the game works, on, on how the actual random number generator system works, and, and to understand the kind of variables that seem to apply here. Um, and one of the things that I noticed right off the bat is that, um, well, super chests don't really have good drops, it seems like, when you click on them right away. Um, I've tested this pretty extensively with most of the super chests, and if the first thing you do is click on the super chest, they tend to drop you pretty crappy results. Um, as you can see, I got very limited items out of those super chests. I'll keep that glowing charm, though. Um, and, you know, not as many as you would expect. However, it's also been my experience that if you click on a lot of things before you click on the Super Chest, it changes the results. There's a lot of ways that you can potentially change the results. The game seems to almost reward you for spending more time in an area or spending more time in the game in general, as opposed to... Uh, rewarding you for not spending a lot of time in the game. And I know that sounds kind of weird, but but uh, stick with me for a second. All right, so if I click on this skeleton here, and then I click on, say, this armor stand, and then I walk over here and I click on this weapon rack and this chest, um, you notice now I start getting some very odd drops, like, for instance, this double um, ornate greaves, etc. thing going on. Um, and then on top of that, um, when I go over here and I finally do click on some of these super chests, because I've clicked on other things beforehand, these start dropping me more stuff, not less, um, because I've clicked on the other things. And this is repeatable. This is something that you can actually test. So you can go over the process and you can test this. You can, you can do this yourself. Um, and I'm going to show you how to do it yourself. And the first thing you need is the seed code that I'm using. So I didn't know my seed code at first. I actually used this little application um, called Mapfinder ID to pull up my seed code. It's the only way that you can do this. Um, and come to find out, somebody else had also found this seed code. Shout out to him. Um, let me see if I can pull his video up here for you. Because he found it before me, apparently, um, about like five months ago. Um, and when I found my seed code, uh, Big Pimpin used that seed code and searched and found his post. Um, his name is Mark Cotton. Um, and he said he has an infinite burst, bear, burst seed map, right? So I was like, okay. And, and look, it matches my seed code almost exactly, which was crazy. Um, so I guess I just lucked into the same exact one as him. And he goes through the process of telling everybody about how he did his particular uh, seed code. Um, and um, he has a YouTube video on him finding the seed code, which I'd like... Uh, I, I, it'd, be, it'd be nice if you guys could go over there and give him a couple of views. Um, but uh, his video is pretty short. It's pretty much just him finding the room. He doesn't talk or anything. 
Um, and he does the same thing I'm doing, uh, going to Trav. Although my original method was so much more convoluted than his. And as you can see, um, he also gets the burn. And then he gets it again. He, you, he does it twice to show that, you know, hey, it's not a problem. Um, does it one more time. And every single time he's able to basically do the same thing. Um, now you can replicate this, um, but I do recommend that if you want to replicate this, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this um, YouTube video uh, link in the description of the video if you want to uh, throw him some uh, likes and some views. He does have his comments turned off though, so can't really um, give him any comments that way. Uh, do, 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 do. So uh, you need my seed code. Um, that's what you need. This is the seed code. And I'm going to show you how to put this seed code in, um, which I have done already on my client. And I'm going to show you how. So what you do is you're going to open up your Battle.net client. Um, and uh, you're going to click on Diablo 2, obviously. Um, and then you're going to go down here to Options. And you're going to go to Game Settings. Um, and then in Game Settings, you're going to check this little box here that says Additional Command Line Arguments. And you're going to type in negative seed, space, and then the seed code, which is 63858963. And all that's going to do is it's going to put you in the same seed as my character is in right now. Um, and then you will be able to do this trick yourself. Now, there are a couple things that you need to know before you can do the trick. First off, you kind of have to move the exact same way I do, almost as if you're, like, mimicking me. Um, if you don't mimic the exact way that I move, you might not get it. Uh, also, run walk speed does seem to be a issue. Um, when I originally tried it with only 30% faster run walk, it wasn't enough. Um, come to find out when we found this guy's post, um, after I found like my first two burr runes, I had found two burr runes before I found this guy's post. But when we found this guy's post, he said that he was using 75%. Uh, run walk 45 percent from enigma and 30 percent from the boots now i didn't have an enigma um but i did make myself a hustle specifically to give this a try and um it seemed to work so 30 plus 40 seems to be enough and uh, once i had the correct amount of run walk i was able to replicate his method uh, which was much more reliable than mine, and his method is very simple. Um, so once you have the seed code in, once you join your Hell Difficulty game, um, you're going to... It doesn't matter where you start, by the way. We've, we've actually tested this. Like, it doesn't, the, like doesn't, the city doesn't seem to matter so much as, like, the timing. And so you're going to go directly to the waypoint. You travel directly to Travancall, and then you travel directly back to Lower Kuras. Teleport here. Skeleton. Corpse. Armor stand. Um, and then you're going to go to the stash, um, it'll come back for that. Uh, you open up that chest, and then you're going to run all the way over here, um, and you're going to click on this. Now, if you see the Elegant Blade and the Shampier, that means you were too fast. Uh, too fast, and uh, it doesn't, uh, doesn't really quite work the way I think. Now, the Mithril Point is a good sign. The Mithril Point means you're on target, and uh, this is... Uh, Interesting. Got a Yari, Maul, Helm, but that stuff's pretty garbage. Uh, I'll check out the smokes here. Plus two martial arts, life and mana. Level 30 requirement. I'll keep it. Now, there's a lot more that you can potentially do in this particular map um, besides just simply trying to farm the bird rune. <laughs> Uh, not only does the uh, Burr Rune come from here, but I also was able to get a Sacred Rondash farm, which was pretty sweet. Um, I also have that uh, Ancient Armor Ornate Plate Grieve farm, which also works fairly well. And then on top of that, there's also the um, Troll's Nest. Uh, there's, a, <laughs> there's a bunch of things. Small Charm. Oh, wow. We got a double on that one. That's crazy. That's two rares in a row. And we went too fast, so we got the Elegant Blade and the Shamshir again. Um, sometimes it just feels like we're just, I don't know what it is, but I just end up going too quickly. And uh, there's really not much I can do about it. Sometimes you can fix this by just simply pausing a little bit. 
Um, so just pause for a second and make up the difference. Um, I'm getting too good at this, <laughs> as you can see from the, what, like 40, 50 freaking burr runes sitting in my stash. Um, and if you doubt that I got all these while I was, you know, on live stream, I, you can go back and take a look at my live stream. I, I guarantee you they're all there. Every single one I found on live stream. And another burger to add to the pile. <laughs> uh, it's so silly. Uh, it's it's just it's just silly. I'm gonna need I'm gonna need a burrune mule. Bet you never heard that before. Holy Jesus! I think we just proved something else. They're identical. <laughs> Holy crap. Now that I did not know. Now that I did not know. So we clicked on that one chest and it dropped an amulet. And then we clicked on the other chest and we got another one. And I thought it was a really odd circumstance that we ended up with two rare amulets. And I saved the first one because it was plus two martial arts with 46 life, 59 mana, five cold resist, and four... 27 out of 30 holy bolt charges and the second one is identical in every way how did we do that can we replicate that see peeking behind the inner workings of the game like this is quite interesting i mean what it comes down to is that almost every single action that we make seems to have some sort of repercussion on that, what items drop and something as simple as going through a waypoint can make a difference in what items drop on the ground, um, which is rather interesting from from a gaming standpoint, from a, like a, a you know an RNG standpoint, is that you know like you just end up with different items depending on how you move or where you go, or what you click on or how many steps you make, right? And um, that's just a really cool thing. Uh, let's see if we get that barrel amulet of life again. So it doesn't always roll rare, but when it did roll rare two times in a row, it was the same amulet both times in a row, which was crazy. We had this happen uh, earlier, but it was with Sacred Ron Dashes. And the Sacred Ron Dashes both rolled 152 defense, 37 all res with four sockets. They both rolled identical. Now, I thought that this was just a quirk of bases because bases can potentially roll the same. Um, and I did not think that it would apply to magical items or unique items or rare items, but apparently I'm wrong. I just got proved wrong in my own video, which is pretty hilarious. Hello. Let's see if we can replicate this amulet thing. Uh, because this is, it's getting even more interesting. Um, and technically those are not dupes. They're two items that are created. And they're just, they've just both been created under the same circumstances, I would guess. Um, so the same circumstances created the same item both times. Um, as long as the circumstances don't change, then the item doesn't change. As long as the circumstances don't change, the item doesn't change. Now that is interesting. Let's try that again. I can't believe that we got the same blue amulet too. So n not only is the same item falling, the same base, but we're also seeing the same exact roll on the item. Now that one wasn't the same. That was a different one, plus one the Barbarian. Okay, but that could just simply mean that we changed the variables ever so slightly, which of course means that we're changing the what actually falls on the ground. Let's let's try that one more time. 
I'm actually very interested in actually hanging on to these items now and seeing what falls out of every single one because if these items are actually, you know, duplicates, that's a whole nother ball of wax. Okay, so we've got a plus one assassin with 7% magic fine. We've got a plus one barbarian with grim ward. Now, e every one of these could be slightly different variables, so we're going to hang on to each one, and then we're going to keep identifying them. If we end up with exact duplicates of every single one, then we know that literally each variable has changed basically what item falls out of the chest, and that you could potentially get literally the same exact item multiple times. This one is 67% extra gold for monsters. So maybe the double duplicate items is a fluke, or maybe the requirements to get the duplicate item are more finite than something like a burr rune. I don't know. There's so much interesting stuff to like learn here to to basically go over the process of like figuring out exactly how the system works and understanding it. And and I think understanding the system is probably one of the coolest things because I mean, right now we have two sets of duplicate amulets, one rare and one magical. So we've confirmed that you can get duplicate items in using this method with just as simple as going to the same chest at the same time um, and clicking on it more than once. So we've got, I mean, they're, they're kind of crappy duplicate items, don't get me wrong. But I think it at least proves that the items themselves can be the exact same item as before if the variables match. And we're not getting the duplicates anymore, so it's kind of weird. Of course, we even we do keep changing the variables ever so slightly. Um, sometimes we click on the thing right away. Sometimes we miss it and have to go back. Um, you know, sometimes we're a little bit slow on the the load in here, and so things do change a little bit. Like I often cast my armor, which I don't know if it makes really much of a difference. Uh, we tested so much stuff that um, I would honestly recommend that if you're really interested in this. Um, that you take a look at my live stream uh, that went on yesterday, which is my single player live stream, and I'll have that uh, linked in the description as well. But I would definitely would recommend that you check that out because we we test out a lot of stuff. Another duplicate. That is just it's just so fascinating to me, um, and and I and I know that some of you guys don't see it as fascinating. You see it as cheating. But I don't see it as cheating. I see it as learning the game mechanics and understanding the underlying principles of how the random number generation system works. Or you could even state it as random number generation exploitation, which is basically we're exploiting the way that the random number generator determines its values. Um, a lot of people don't understand that, that random number generators aren't really truly random um, and that the way that they actually work is by sampling information um, and then using that information to determine a random number. Um, but the information that they use to determine the random number isn't random. It's something that actually can be controlled. Now, if you know what that thing is, then you have a better understanding of how to do that. And we got another duplicate. So I kind of just like was losing faith there a little bit, but at the same time, there we go. Look, we've got another another duplicate set. So now we have we have two 67%. We've got two plus two summonings with three decks. We've got two barrel life of uh, barrel amulets of life, two rune mark amulets, and the only thing we haven't gotten two of yet is the assassin and the barbarian amulet. And and it really comes down to the fine tuning of exactly when you click on the chest. Um, I don't really know what else to talk about with this. I mean, it, it's 
it's something that I have fun doing because it's it's addictive to just simply see how you can manipulate the system and what the results will be. Um, I mean, for instance, let's check that amulet afterward, but I think I can already tell which one that one is because even the graphic is the same as the one that I'm looking for, which is going to be the plus two martial arts, right? No, this is a different one. Okay. So we managed to get another different one than before. This makes me really consider, like, just, just how much is actually truly random with the game, or if we're just looking at, you know, this, this like, pseudo-randomness that we, you know, we see, we see this pseudo-randomness, and we think it's random. You know, of course, it's not really random because it's a video game, but, um... Man, is it really is it really this much not as random as we think? Like, is it really not as not as random? There's my yeah. Ithrun. I was telling you guys about that one. That the Ithrun was right next to the Burr Rune. Remember, I was uh, talking about that in the um, in my my thing that the Ithrun and the Burr Rune were basically like right next to each other. And when you get the Ithrun, you know you like barely missed the Burr Rune. Poison length reduced by 75%. Uh, we did not have one of those yet. That's another another new one to the pile. It's it's interesting to see the like the different drops if we change the variables ever so slightly, and then the other drops if we don't. Now, um, before I get off on a tangent, and I do need to get some sleep because I got a stream for last epoch later on today. Um, I just got off night shift and it's like 2.30 a.m., but I wanted to record this video real quick. The, um, the interesting thing about all of this is that the variables change, um, very easily through moving around the map, through, through teleporting, through clicking on items. Like, it, it, there doesn't seem to be much of a limit to it. Um, but if even time seems to somehow play a factor in it, as well as like the number of steps that you take, um, but not always. Um, and, and it's, and it's strange when it does and when it doesn't. Um, to give you an example, this double axe and dirk will always drop from this chest unless we change the variables. Um, and, um, and I've played around with this tremendously. And, um, I mean, you can do all sorts of things that you might think would be variables. Like, for instance, you can talk to Ormus. Um, you can cast your spell a bunch of times. Um, you can uh, go to Lower Karast and you can run around in circles because you might think that it's by the number of steps. Um, and a lot of this stuff actually doesn't change the result, um, which is really quite odd. Uh, so I tried to hypothesize exactly what it is that's causing the anomaly, the, the, the change in the way the chest works. And um, I think what I ended up coming down to was that it's not about the number of steps or the time. It's actually about, I think, and this is just my, my theory, uh, so don't uh, take it as, as the law, but my theory is is that when you load into an area, it loads a chunk around you. Like, imagine the screen is a chunk, and I know that the chunk is bigger than that, but just for the sake of argument, let's imagine the screen is a chunk. Um, and when you enter the zone, you load that chunk, all right? If I teleport up here um, into a new chunk, you can actually see it load. Um, now I have loaded a new chunk, and let's see if it changed the result. So notice now the, the result has changed because I loaded a new chunk of the map. And it seems like it's actually the loading of various places within the map that seems to change the result of the chests. So the more that you discover, um, or, or rather in a limited way, if you discover a limited number of objects, you can change the chest in the direction that you're trying to go. In the case of the, the, like, the combination that I'm using, 
I don't necessarily think that clicking on all the stuff is required so much as it seems to be that I'm going in the correct direction to activate essentially the areas that I need to activate. So when I go to Travancall, I'm loading in this chunk. And then when I go to Lower Kuros, I'm loading in the Lower Kuros trunk second. And then when I teleport up here, I may be inadvertently loading in this chunk up here, which then I go over here, and I might be inadvertently loading in this chunk up here, and so forth and so on, until eventually I get over here and I load in this chunk on this side, um, at which point I move directly over this way, and I have to make sure I go far enough south, probably to load this chunk down here, and eventually I do get back around to this, and then I end up with usually the burr room. Now, there does also seem to be a little bit of a timing thing to it once you start loading in places, and it may be because if you stand too still in one area for too long or something, I'm not really entirely sure, it could be loading in additional chunks. And so in that case, it might be a case of that you need to do it quickly to prevent the game from loading in additional information once you reach that chunk, and, and I don't know if that's actually accurate. It's, it's all a guess on my part, but as you can clearly see, um, I am capable of reproducing the Burr Rune essentially every single time, um, just by simply following this particular pathway. So here, here, skeleton, corpse, armor stand, which always gives a mummified trophy, by the way, stash, weapon rack, <coughs> Super chest. And we were too fast because we had to teleport past the monsters. So let's try this again. Now, another interesting thing uh, that we can talk about here, I know the video has already been going for 37 minutes, um, but another interesting thing that we can talk about is that we found out that the monster stays the same as well. So when you load the map in a particular way like this to control the drop of the the burr room, essentially, you are creating a situation where the monsters stay the same. So the monsters end up being the same monsters every single time because you're spawning everything in the same way every single time. It's actually really strange because for the longest time I kept seeing the same Might Enchanted monsters and I'm like, holy crap, are these all Might Enchanted? Every single time. This seems rather strange, right? And the crazy thing is, is that, well, I wasn't wrong. They were actually Might Enchanted every single time. And eventually we started to get to the point where we started to see ones that were Conviction Enchanted every single time. And we couldn't exactly figure out what the hell was going on because we're like, why are they always conviction enchanted? Well, we paid, I actually started to pay attention to the name of the monster, which is Doomhead the Hammer. And Doomhead the Hammer was showing up every single time um, as long as I did the same variables. So as long as I was doing the same exact variables every single time, I was getting Doomhead the Hammer every single time. So not only are the items being decided by this, not only is the, um, you know, like the, the, the item itself, like the, the, the modifiers on the item being decided by this, but also the monsters that you're fighting are being decided by this. And on top of this, not only are the monsters you're fighting being decided by this, but the modifiers that they have and even their name is apparently decided by this. It goes much deeper, I think, than a lot of people ever realized, and I think that's absolutely crazy because the just the fact that the 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 items, it's not just the items. I mean, like if we can write it all down here, and it might sound like I'm an absolute crazy kookhead, but like the items that drop. The monsters that spawn, the monster types that spawn, the modifiers on the monsters, and not only that, but 
the position of the monsters. I'm missing an S there. Position. Ash position of the monsters. Um, and it's it's crazy because you're basically like doing, you're controlling everything. You're not just controlling one aspect of, of the way that the game works. You're controlling everything. Um, and, and I can show you this by changing the variables a little bit. So let me let me change the variables just a bit here. And um, I'm going to, instead of going directly to Travancall and then going to Lord Hurast, I'm going to go right to Lord Hurast. Um, and this is where we usually see Doomhead the Hammer. Let's uh, let's see if Doomhead the Hammer is here. And there's our ancient uh, armor, ornate plates, and greaves again. And uh, did we get Doomhead the Hammer? We did not get Doomhead the Hammer. Let's try again. I believe to get Doomhead the Hammer, we might have to remove some of our run walk speed to uh, to change the timing ever so slightly. But we can also change the timing by doing this, running in a circle. Let's do two circles. All right, we've changed the timing. And we got the Greaves and the Ornate Plate yet again. I don't see Doomhead the Hammer this time. Uh, Doomhead the Hammer sometimes, however, if we get the variables wrong, he spawns up here. That is Windraiser the Axe. That is not correct. So we're not getting the, um, the variables to spawn the monster. However, I did do this several times and repeat it several times within the live stream. So if you want to check that out. It is there. Um, I, I don't remember all the variables. There's so many variables and there's so many different things that I changed over that like nearly eight hour stream messing around with like all the different things that you can possibly mess around with playing with the like where I would go first, um, how long it would take me to get there, what I clicked on on the way there like sometimes I would click on this first and then I would walk over here and then click on this uh, which would give me the quilted armor which was rather silly um, and then I would walk up here click on here I would get the mighty scepter which was a very common one and then the great mall and then I might click on some of these down here and move my way over this way and a lot of the times um, when I was first testing this out I really didn't end up with a lot of bird runes if I'm being perfectly honest um, couldn't figure it out to begin with. Um, I was uh, I was making a lot of mistakes, getting my booty smacked by half the tree lurkers all the time, and that one tree lurker with the might and the conviction was absolutely wrecking me. Anyway, I'm interested to hear what you guys think about this ridiculous bur rune farm and my, and my giant stack of bur runes. Um, at this point, um, there's so many things here to go over. So many little points of data that I, I feel like we could almost come to a conclusion on like what's going on behind the scenes by using this seed code and by slowly testing things out until we figure out all the variables on what you could potentially do. Um, the biggest takeaway that I would like take with you from this is that um, changing the variables can often have some drastic effects on what drops from the chests, the weapon racks, um, even, and, and believe it or not, I was actually kind of surprised to find out that um, something as simple as like a corpse on the ground or, or like a, um, um, you know, like a, a skeleton can drop the same thing every single time. You guys might not um, believe it, but like I, I have seen literally some of these things, like even just as simple as like a, 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 a skeleton drop the same item like 10, 20, 30 times. Um, and, and the variables don't seem to change all that much. Like if I do it right now and I click on this skeleton right here and then this corpse, um, a lot of the times I will see literally the same items dropping even from like the skeleton or the corpse, not just this. Um, I can get almost a guaranteed grand charm from this little stash right here almost every single time. I would see a flawless emerald spawn from this skeleton almost every single time. Let's see if we can get that flawless emerald to pop out. 
it's just a variable, just like the amulets being duplicated. Um, there's really, there's really not much more to it than that. And uh, and I swear I could do this all day. I could, I, I could, I could play with these variables all day, and I could just have fun with this all day long, because I swear it's just, it's it's just so much fun to me, uh, messing around with these variables and seeing what. Uh, what you can change and how you can, can make the items, you know, slightly different or slightly worse or slightly better than the others. And um, <coughs> I, 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 I'm trying to figure out in my mind, like, which ones will give you the variables that you need. Um, or, or let me let me put it this way. Um. And I'm saying I'm a lot here. Uh, my brain's working overtime just trying to figure all this stuff out. But, like, what actually counts as a variable and what doesn't? Like, that's essentially what you could figure out here. And uh, and, and I'm not entirely sure that the answer is quite as straightforward. And there we go. So we got two flawed topazes and two mesh boots. Same thing both times. So this particular skeleton right here dropped us a flawed topaz and low quality mesh boots uh, every single time, um, and this is the that's the variable that we currently have running here. So with our with our current variables, if we do this the same way every single time, we should get a flawed topaz and mesh boots every single time from that skeleton. It's not just super chests. It's not just weapon racks. It's literally every clickable that I can I can find. Uh, flawed topaz, mesh boots. It's it's a repeatable thing that you can do over and over and over again, which says to me one thing and screams to me one thing. Predetermined drops. That's what it screams to me. Um, it's basically almost like a form of predetermined drops. The game is essentially putting a list of drops out there that is included in the chest, just like I just like I have written here. Um, that like there's a, a certain number of drop sets and it's choosing one of those drop sets. And so when I click on this item, it's literally just pulling this drop set from a table and it's just throwing it on the ground. And if you click on it at the same time, every single time, that drop set will always fall. Um, something, even something as simple as a skeleton, um, which technically means that you could get the same item like over and over and over again in single player. Now you can't really do this in online, but th this knowing this information, I think, would change the way that you would deal with items, the the way that you would click on stuff, because knowing this, you have to understand that this represents a a form of knowledge and understanding of the game mechanics that can actually be exploited, and what is it? Well, if that skeleton is going to drop the same thing every single time, no matter what, right? What if the item that he's going to drop me is a low rune? What if it's a burr rune? What if it's a cham or a zod? You don't know what that skeleton or whatever is pre-programmed to drop you unless you click on it. It's not a random chance. It's a guaranteed item. In this particular case, it's guaranteed to be an antidote potion, a flawed topaz, a low quality mesh boots, and a super healing potion, which is not exactly very impressive. But that super chest that drops a burr rune is. The, you know, like if you come across one that drops you a grand charm every single time. If you come across one that drops you, you know, like a jewel and a small charm every single time. And there's tons of different ways that you could potentially utilize this to your advantage. What does it mean? Well, be a raccoon. That's basically what it means. Click on everything. Because you never know what is going to pop out of something. Because these little predetermined roles are so hard to um, to guess. You don't know what the hell is going to pop out of these items. It could be the same thing every single time. Or it could be something different every single time. You could take slightly different steps, and you could end up with a different result. Um, in single player, you can do this because the seed code is the same. In online, you can't do this because the seed code changes, but that doesn't mean that, for instance, this chest right here couldn't possibly be the chest that drops you a burr root. Mm. 
getting a little tired. Um, I hope I have entertained you at the very least, given you some interesting food for thought, given you something fun to play around with. Um, it'd be interesting to see your guys, uh, you know, like testing on this. Maybe I put down in the comments like how you did. Like, were you able to get to Burr Rune? Uh, were you able to replicate my results? Um, what information did you find was, you know, something that changed the variables? Like, what changed the variables in your situation? Uh, what were you able to find when you changed the variables? And so forth and so on. Um, anyway, as always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos, even when I'm just ranting for 50 minutes on uh, infinite burr runes. And uh, as always, keep watching.